Alright, let's grab it here. So, why is an oscilloscope not a logic analyzer? So, let's take a look. So, I'll set up a small experimental circuit and um, we we'll just have an Arduino Uno microcontroller that produces one digital signal. And then I have a four channel oscilloscope and I'm taking the signal in through the first channel. So, what does the oscilloscope show? Well, basically, it shows timing, which goes in the X axis, and then the active voltage, which is on the Y axis. So here we can see that it's um, about two and a half volts, and then it goes to zero, and then it goes to two and a half, and then it comes progresses like that. So, um, oh, that's all fine and dandy. I mean, we, we, we can see what the uh, digital signal is here, so what's the problem? So, I mean, the biggest problem here is that this is um, time and voltage, so um, you know, basically this um, device doesn't understand the concept of a state, like what is zero and what is one. And um, that's usually defined by a specific uh, voltage level, and um, an extension to that, that um, if you want to have a state definition model, then the this device would need to understand different types of digital circuits like uh, TTL and, and so forth. And um, what is the vo vo voltages involved with it, with the transition from zero to one and one to zero? And um, there's also the issue of that you have different digital voltage uh, circuits. Um, you have 3.3 volt um, circuits and then you have 5 volt circuits and other kinds of digital circuits. So it's not only, you can only use one voltage as a definition for the state transition. And uh, of course this is a timing display here. So it's not a state display, so I mean you would think, okay, well, we, obviously that's one and that's zero. But, you know, is it really uh, under the definition of a specific digital circuit operating under a certain operational voltage? Is that actually now one and is that zero or is it just some arbitrary voltage that's um, not actually triggering anything? So maybe under certain circumstances with um, a certain type of digital circuit, this is... This, if this is feeding into another digital circuit, then maybe it's just zero all the time, or yeah, you you don't know because this is this is a timing and voltage displays. There's no automatic readout of state. And in addition to that, since you're missing the state definition, you can't trigger on state. So let's say I would like the um, data gathering in this case to start with the first time it hits zero as a state definition and, you know this is an oscilloscope it basically just scans in the data and shows it spread out on time so it, it doesn't understand that request there's no I mean, you do have a trigger here and that just stabilizes basically it's just trying to trigger on this whole s captured signal sample so but it has nothing to do with what the state of the signal is so it <laughs> doesn't understand state. Uh, also, the other issue is that it's quite important in digital circuits to actually have a definition of a falling edge and a rising edge. And you would like to um, also, like the example of triggering on state, you would like to trigger on edge. So maybe you would like to um, actually start gathering data the first time the edge um, goes up. So you would actually like the sampling to start from there instead of some random location at the beginning. But then you say, I mean, what are you making such a big deal about it? You can actually, I mean, you can, you, you can see enough here. I mean, I mean, it's, it's one, it's zero, you know what sort of digital circuit you're working with. You have the timing, so, you know, what's the big deal? So anyway, let's have a look at another case. So, now we have um, two digital signals and they're on. I made them so that they're a bit phase shifted. So, um, as you see, the triggering doesn't really work because it's 
No, it can't really trigger on one or the other. So let's pause it just to get it display stable. And um, that would of course make it pretty difficult to analyze the signal with jumping around like that. Especially if you're looking for a, a more dynamic signal. Um, but let's say that I'm, in this case, I'm interested in state. So as we discussed before, Oscoscope hasn't got state, so it doesn't know that this is zero and, <coughs> and, and this is zero. But let's say I want to start gathering data from this point when both these signals are zero. Uh, well, can't do it because it, there's no state diagram. Um, neither can I trigger it on a specific edge happening. So, like the first time this goes low and the first time that goes high. You know, no, I doesn't understand uh, the definition of an edge. So I, I wouldn't be able to tell the device to uh, actually do that. And then the one additional thing is that I can't identify these signals. I mean, there's no, no way I can label these signals as to what, what they are. Is it a data line? Is it a address zero? Or is it D zero? Or what is this? Is this a control line? Is this read write from memory? Or what, what is this? And I can only see the voltage on the time. So, anyway, here's a complicated case or one usually does in digital circuits there here you have a signal that says when is this data valid and when is the state of this signal considered valid so it kind of goes up on the rising edge and then it should give the state and then when it goes down again this signal becomes invalid so it should ignore everything else and when the rising edge comes again then it should take the state of that signal and then it should ignore it when it comes down again and then of course with an oscilloscope you can't really do that very easily so you, you would actually want to capture the state of this signal based on the state of the edge rising edge um, falling edge um, between time and, and the, otherwise the signal is invalid so you're not interested in seeing what what it's doing and this is very typical in signal circuits so you actually set up the data you trigger the validity of the data and then whatever comes after the validity period is done setting up new data and stuff is, should be ignored and that's what you want to capture and see as an engineer <laughs> when, what, what, what does the valid data look like ok it's a very typical uh, engineering problem the one deals with and why digital circuits go to uh, jump off a cliff <laughs> Uh, it's called a glitch. So basically, you come along here in the control signal, and then you say a rising edge. So the other signal is stable and valid. And then suddenly, well, bloom, it is not. And then it continues, and then it's invalid again. So you don't care about from here to here, you don't care about, but then it indicates it's valid. And then you, of course, you don't, in glitches, you never get this system. Well, very seldom you get this systematic. They can be random occurrences. And um, in uh, logic terms, the in logic analysis, you have this capability of saying that okay, this signal's saying that that signal should be valid, so it will be analyzing this stability of this other state signal uh, um, to see if it's actually staying stable for the time that this is valid. And if it isn't, then you get a big warning, like Rah! panic alert so you get a clear clear report that based on this um, control signal that specific signal was glitching it wasn't stable in its state very useful feature and of course uh, i suppose it's not a very good example because you, <laughs> you can see it with the oscar but usually what happens is that this is a very intermittent occurrence and then it ruins the state so the state is not stable the logic analyzer will tell you that whoops that signal is glitching and then you can actually focus on that um, specific signal and on, on the, you know to monitor it and um, okay the more expensive equipment you have you actually have a, 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 a logical analyzer with a built-in oscilloscope so that, uh, 
and, and time and state analysis and the oscilloscope time display connected together so then you have a, like a <laughs> the more money you pay the more you get so when you press a button you say glitch detection and then you can uh, you connect up all your probes and then you just you know just leave it running overnight and then in the morning you have a nice report on the display like this the glitch was found here and uh, it was this intimate and then So, anyway, that's coming to the end of this presentation. I wanted to keep it as brief as possible just to be able to show the main arguments as to why I don't scope it. It's not a um, logic analyzer. And, of course, the most obvious thing is that um, this oscilloscope happens to have four channels, So, but when you run out of um, channels, then um, you know, <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're a little bit out of luck. So when you have to um, analyze, you know, digital buses up to, you know, 128 bits or, or yeah, then then you actually have a bit of a problem. And then uh, one one thing I'd like to highlight, of course, is the scopes. Um, depending on what scope you have, but the, it can't analyze the what is this. If you would say that this is a specific type of a bus digital signal, then um, yeah, there there are oscilloscopes that can uh, interpret that um, data to a higher level. Uh, for certain, yeah, in a certain ways. But uh, usually, when it comes to digital signals. And bus signals, then your logic analyzers have much more um, high-level an analytics that you can connect in, including um, CPU analysis. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Let's just uh, take a round discussion about this, and um, yeah, I um, think that pretty much summarizes it. Yeah, well, I'll see you in the next one.